Have you ever had an amazing first round with your partner? Felt like you were on top of the world? Only to find that when you're both ready for more, your body just shuts down? You want to get hard again, but it feels impossible. If this sounds familiar, you're not alone. In fact, it's one of the most common questions I get from men worldwide. I'm Dr. Sophie Clark, a urologist with over 15 years of experience helping men reclaim their sexual confidence. Today, I'm going to tell you exactly what happens in your body during that frustrating waiting period, why things change as you get older, and give you proven strategies to bounce back faster than you ever thought possible. What you're experiencing has a name. It's called the refractory period. And while it's completely natural, there are effective ways to influence it, shorten it, and improve your body's recovery time. By the end of this, you'll not only understand what's happening, but you'll have a clear roadmap to get your stamina back. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is this refractory period? It's the recovery phase after orgasm, during which it's physiologically impossible, or at least very difficult, for a man to achieve another erection and orgasm. And it varies dramatically based on age. If you're in your late teens or 20s, recovery might take just minutes. Your testosterone is high, your blood vessels are flexible, your nervous system is firing on all cylinders. You're designed to be ready again, quickly. But as you enter your 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond, things start to change. That quick recovery time you once enjoyed becomes a much longer wait. For some men, it stretches to half an hour. For others, it's hours. But why does this happen? After orgasm, several key changes occur in your body. A hormone called prolactin, associated with sexual satisfaction, shoots up. This surge basically tells your body, we're done for now. At the same time, dopamine, the chemical of motivation and arousal, plummets. While dopamine drops, prolactin rises, acting like a powerful anti-arousal signal. Interestingly, some studies show that prolactin levels released after partnered sex are significantly higher than after masturbation, which might explain why the refractory period often seems longer during encounters with a partner. However, it's crucial to understand that while prolactin plays an important role, it might not be the whole story. The exact why is still debated by scientists, but this hormonal shift is the most accepted theory. Here's the key point. This cooling off phase is a natural physiological response, not a sign of dysfunction. A longer recovery time simply means your physiology has changed. And once you understand the mechanics, you can work with it and even improve it. So what can you actually do about it? Now we're going to find out. One of the smartest methods for dealing with a long refractory period isn't chasing a second round, but extending the first one. There's a little known technique called perineal pressure. The perineum is the area between your scrotum and anus. By pressing firmly on this spot with two fingers, just before the point of no return, it's possible to interrupt the ejaculatory reflex. In some men, this can lead to what's known as a dry orgasm. You experience the pleasure, but since you haven't fully ejaculated, the big hormonal shift is smaller, and your erection can often stay strong. It's not a trick you master overnight, but men who practice it often feel like they've found a new level of control. But what if you've already ejaculated? How do you recover faster? First, let's talk about what slows recovery. Heavy meals, especially those rich in fats and carbohydrates, divert blood flow toward digestion, not toward your reproductive system. Alcohol is a depressant that can affect blood flow to the penis. Smoking constricts blood vessels, directly sabotaging recovery. What should you do instead? First, hydrate. Drink a glass of water because erections depend on good blood volume. Second, focus on deep breathing to oxygenate your blood. Slow, steady inhalations, 
calm your nervous system and can help reduce stress hormones that interfere with arousal. Third, stay connected with your partner. Cuddle, kiss and keep using your hands. Watching your partner get excited can be a powerful psychological trigger to rekindle your own desire. Finally, after a few minutes of rest, try light, novel stimulation. A new type of touch or exploring a different erogenous zone can send fresh arousal signals to your brain, helping overcome those hormonal stop signals. Now, let's move to the long-term strategy. If you want to see lasting improvements, you need to build a stronger sexual foundation. Think of your body like an athlete's. If you want it to perform well, it needs consistent training and the right fuel. Your diet is crucial. Your goal is to boost nitric oxide, a molecule that relaxes blood vessels and allows blood to flow freely to the penis. Foods that promote nitric oxide like spinach, arugula and beets are your allies. In fact, some studies show that beet juice can significantly increase nitric oxide levels. Foods rich in L-arginine, like nuts and seeds, also help, as do antioxidants found in berries and dark chocolate. Exercise is non-negotiable. Cardiovascular training, like running or swimming, keeps blood vessels flexible. Just 30 minutes of exercise five times a week can change your sexual stamina. The second part is more specific. Pelvic floor exercises, also known as Kegels. These muscles are crucial for erectile function and help control blood flow. To find them, try stopping your urine stream midway. That's the muscle. Contract it for three to five seconds, then relax. Try doing three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions daily. Just like any other muscle, consistency is key. Finally, we have to talk about sleep and stress. Sleep is non-negotiable. Most of your testosterone is produced during deep sleep. Stress is another major factor. Chronic stress increases cortisol, which reduces testosterone and libido. Tools like meditation or yoga aren't just for relaxation. They directly support your sex life. The lifestyle strategies we've discussed should be the foundation for any man. However, there are times when home methods aren't enough, and it's important to know when to talk to a doctor. The most common first-line medical treatments are oral medications, known as PDE5 inhibitors. You probably know them by their brand names, Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. While these medications aren't officially approved for shortening the refractory period, many men find they make getting a second erection much easier. The medication stays active in your system after the first orgasm, giving you a boost for the second round. Tadalafil, or Cialis, can work for up to 36 hours, making it especially useful. But medications aren't something you should experiment with on your own. They must be supervised by a doctor, as they can be dangerous for men with certain heart problems or low blood pressure. If oral medications aren't effective, there are other medical solutions, from injection therapies to, in some cases, hormone replacement therapy, if testosterone deficiency is diagnosed. The purpose of mentioning them isn't to suggest you need them, but to empower you with knowledge. You have options. A consistently long refractory period, along with weak erections, can be an early warning sign of other health problems. Please don't self-diagnose. Talk to a doctor. We can give you a proper diagnosis and create a safe, effective plan designed specifically for you. Let me share something important about mindset. The pressure you put on yourself is often the biggest obstacle to a second round. When you're lying there after the first orgasm, thinking, come on, get hard again, you're actually working against yourself. That mental pressure increases stress hormones, which directly interfere with arousal. Instead, focus on the experience, not the performance. Enjoy the intimacy with your partner. Use this time for connection, touching, talking. Remove the timeline pressure. When you stop demanding that your body perform on command, it often responds more naturally. 
many men find that when they stop trying so hard to get ready for round two, it happens more easily. This isn't just psychology, it's physiology. Stress hormones are erection killers. Relaxation hormones are erection helpers. There's another technique I want to share with you. It's called edging. And while it's often talked about in casual terms, there's real science behind it. Edging involves bringing yourself close to orgasm repeatedly without actually climaxing. This builds up sexual tension and can make your eventual orgasm more intense. But more importantly for our discussion, it trains your body to maintain arousal for longer periods. Men who practice edging often find they can extend their first session significantly, sometimes making a second round unnecessary. If you do choose to practice edging, start slowly. The goal isn't to torture yourself, but to gradually increase your control and stamina. Some men find that after practicing edging for a few weeks, their natural staying power improves dramatically. Let's talk about something most men never consider the role of breathing during sex. Most men hold their breath or breathe shallowly during intense moments. This actually reduces oxygen to your blood and can make you finish faster than you'd like. Proper breathing during sex serves multiple purposes. It keeps you relaxed, maintains good blood flow and can actually help you last longer. Practice slow, deep breathing during your next intimate session. Breathe in through your nose for four counts, hold for two, then exhale through your mouth for six counts. This type of breathing activates your parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest mode that's optimal for sexual function. Many men are surprised by how much this simple change can improve their stamina and recovery time. Here's something else that might surprise you. Your mental state leading up to sex can dramatically affect your refractory period. If you approach intimacy with anxiety, worry, or performance pressure, your body is already primed for a longer recovery time. Instead, try spending the hour before intimacy in a relaxed, positive state. Take a warm shower, practice some deep breathing, or do light stretching. Avoid stressful conversations, work emails, or anything that gets your mind racing. Some men find that gentle exercise earlier in the day, like a 20 minute walk, helps them feel more relaxed and confident during intimate moments. The goal is to arrive at intimacy with a calm, confident mindset rather than a stressed, anxious one. Hydration plays a bigger role than most men realize. Dehydration, even mild dehydration, can significantly affect blood flow and sexual performance. Your blood becomes thicker when you're dehydrated, making it harder for your cardiovascular system to do its job. Aim to drink water consistently throughout the day, not just when you feel thirsty. A good rule is to check your urine colour. Pale yellow means you're well hydrated. Dark yellow means you need more water. Some men find that drinking a glass of water about 30 minutes before intimacy helps with both performance and recovery. Just don't overdo it right before. You don't want to be distracted by a full bladder. Temperature can also affect your performance and recovery. Many men find that a warm environment helps with blood flow and relaxation. If your bedroom is cold, your body diverts blood flow away from extremities, including the penis, to maintain core temperature. A warm shower together before intimacy can be both romantic and physiologically helpful. The heat relaxes muscles, improves circulation, and can help both partners get in the right mindset. Let's address something that's often overlooked. The importance of variety. If you and your partner have fallen into a routine, your brain might become less responsive to the same stimuli. Novelty is a powerful aphrodisiac for the brain. This doesn't mean you need to do anything extreme or uncomfortable. Simple changes like different positions, different locations, or different times of day can wake up neural pathways that have become dormant. The brain is your most important sex organ. When it's engaged and excited, the body follows much more easily. 
Boredom is an erection killer. Excitement and novelty are erection enhancers. Here's a practical tip many men find helpful. After your first orgasm, don't immediately focus on getting hard again. Instead, shift your attention to your partner's pleasure. Use your hands, your mouth, talk to them, focus completely on their experience. This serves multiple purposes. It takes the pressure off your performance, it keeps the intimate connection strong, and watching your partner's pleasure can be incredibly arousing. Many men find that by the time they're done focusing on their partner, their own body is ready for round two. Remember, good sex isn't just about erections and orgasms, it's about connection, pleasure, and shared intimacy. When you expand your definition of great sex beyond just penetration, you often find that everything else improves too. The refractory period is normal, but it doesn't have to control your sex life. With the right knowledge, techniques and mindset, you can significantly improve your recovery time and sexual satisfaction. Focus on the lifestyle factors we discussed. Good nutrition, regular exercise, adequate sleep, stress management. Practice the techniques like perineal pressure and proper breathing. Most importantly, communicate with your partner and remove performance pressure from the equation. You're not broken, you're adaptable. With the right approach, you can enjoy a passionate, satisfying sex life at any age. The key is working with your body's natural processes rather than fighting against them. If this information has helped you understand your body better, remember that knowledge is only powerful when it's applied. Start with small changes and be patient with yourself. Your body wants to perform well. Sometimes it just needs the right support and environment to do so. Your sexual health is an important part of your overall well-being. Don't ignore persistent problems or assume they're just part of aging. Many men are surprised to learn that what they thought was normal aging was actually something that could be improved with the right approach. In my 15 years as a urologist, I've seen men in their 60s and 70s dramatically improve their sexual function and satisfaction. Age is not a barrier to great sex. It's just a different chapter that requires some adjustments. Take care of your body, communicate openly with your partner, and remember that the best sex happens when you're relaxed, confident, and focused on connection rather than performance. Your best years can be ahead of you, not behind you.